Mr. Kaczynski here, going through section double C of IXL's Algebra 1 skills. Today it's linear functions over unit intervals. Real basic linear stuff here. Uh, just got to make sure we understand what they're talking about, lay down the groundwork for some other things. How does g of t change over the interval from t equals 1 to t equals 2? So when the value of t increases by this 1, here's t increasing by 1, what happens to the overall value of the function? Okay, so let's go to t equals 1 and find the output of the function. It's 3 right there. And let's go to t equals 2 and find the output of the function. It's 6 right there. Okay, so over this interval right here, what happened to t? It went up. Sorry, I usually use red to show that change. It went up how much? From 3 to 6. It's an increase of 3. So I see that increase of 3 right here. All right, by a factor of 3, no, we didn't multiply 3 by 3 to get 9. That's not true. Definitely didn't decrease by 3. An increase of 300% would mean that um, an increase of 100% would take it to 6, and another 100% would take it to 9, and another 100% would take it to 12. So uh, it's definitely not percents. So don't overthink this here. All right, what about over this interval? Okay, again, notice that the interval is 1. All right, so at negative 8, the output is 8. And at negative 7, the output is 7. So over this interval, what happened to the value of the function? It went down by 1. There it is. H of t decreases by 1. All right, so off of graphs, I don't think you're going to have too much problem figuring this out. In fact, I might even argue that it's easier when we're only given the equation and not the uh, graph of the function. All right, so again, this is just an increase of 1. All right, I'm going to show you the long way, and then I'm going to show you the shortcut. Maybe you'll figure out the shortcut for yourself. How does this function, defined by 3x minus 8, change over that interval? All right, well, let's figure out when x is 3 first, okay? So let's do 3 times 3 minus 8. That would be h of 3, all right, which would be 9 minus 8, which would be 1. Then let's figure out when x is 4. So we're going to do h of 4 equals 3 times 4 minus 8, which is 12 minus 8. And I know you can probably do this math in your head. There we go. So the question is, what happened? Over this increase of 1, what happened to the value of the function? It increased by <clears throat> 3. g of x increases by 3. Do you think that 3 right there has anything to do with it? Um, it definitely does. Okay, It's the slope. Okay, As x increases by 1, what happens to the value of the function? It increases by 3, the slope. It's all about the slope. Okay, so as long as this interval is increasing by 1, which it is here, this number right here should tell us what's happening to x. Negative uh, shows decreasing, and the 2 shows a decrease of 2. Okay, um, I'll prove it to you one more time here. If we put negative 8 in, h at negative 8 equals negative 2 times negative 8 minus 9 which is 16 minus 9, which is 7. And if we put negative 7 in here, h of negative 7, that would be negative 2 times negative 7 minus 9, which is 14 minus 9, which is 5. And I told you it would be a decrease of 2. It is a decrease of 2. So at the very end in the challenge zone, they give you this problem. Again, it's still just an increase of 1. It's an interval of 1. I guess maybe I should use the word interval. And there's our change over an interval of 1. It's the slope of the function. At least that's the case with linear functions. So decreases because it's negative by 0.4. All right. So that's uh, linear functions over unit intervals. So you're going to fly through it. Good luck.